Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. Let's talk about cancer. Now, firstly, cancer is a disease of rapidly dividing cells. These are cells that are dividing uncontrollably. The other important point is that cancer is founded in our genes and there are aberrations in our DNA that result in cancer. Now, before I begin, I wanted to use an analogy that helps us get our heads around the complexities of cancer. I'm gonna steal this analogy from the great Dr. Najib. So think about you picking your car up from the mechanic. You're driving your car home and you approach a red light. You go to put your foot on the brake and the car does not listen to you telling it to stop. You worry, you put your hand on the handbrake to pull it up. It doesn't stop. You turn the key off, the car still doesn't stop. In actual fact, it starts to accelerate and it moves through all these stop signals. You're worrying, you're thinking, what can I do to turn the car off? You think, well, it's gonna run out of road at some point and when it does run out of road, it keeps going. It no longer sticks to the roads that you're using. You think, only way I'm gonna stop is if I hit a wall. As you approach a wall, you start moving your way through. So the boundaries there to confine you no longer work. You think, okay, I'm gonna to have to run out of petrol then. And as you run out of fuel, you'll find that the car starts to use alternate fuel sources. Now, think about what has happened. One, the car no longer listens to stop signals. It now activates itself and further accelerates. It no longer uses the roads that are there for it. It moves through boundaries set to confine it. It no longer uses its fuel source, it uses alternate fuel sources. And the mechanic who was supposed to pick up all these things actually missed it and wasn't doing their job. This is cancer. Now, we're gonna talk about cancer by highlighting the seven hallmarks of cancer. These hallmarks differentiate a cancer cell from a normal cell. So let's first begin with number one, selective growth and proliferative advantage. If you were to take normal cells of the body and put them in a petri dish and grow them up in a lab, which I do, you'll find that these normal cells, once they grow enough that they hit the boundary of the plate, they stop growing. So there are signals that tell cells to grow and then there are signals to tell cells, okay, it's time to stop growing. Now, if I were to grow cancer cells in this petri dish, what you'll find is that when the cancer cells grow and they hit the walls, they don't stop, they keep going, they grow, 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 and they grow on top of each other. That means they have constant go, go, go growth signals and the inhibition signals are stopped. Now, what you find here is that this again is embedded in our genes. There is a gene called, an, or a number of genes called oncogenes and they promote growth. There are genes which we call tumor suppressor genes and they turn cells off. Growth signal, off signal, right? Now what you need is a mutation in these oncogenes that turn it right up, telling the cell to grow, 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 grow. Now luckily we've got these tumor suppressor genes that can tell it to stop. So you also need a mutation in these tumor suppressor genes that turn it off so there's now no longer a stop signal. So this is what's happening with selective growth and proliferative advantage. Some of these oncogenes include the RAS family and one really important tumor suppressor gene is that of P53. All right, let's now move on to altered stress response. So cancer cells throughout their growth phases actually are exposed to numerous amounts of stresses. So these stresses include DNA damage, it includes hypoxia, it includes nutrient scarcity, can even include chemotherapies that they're exposed to. And what cancer cells are really good at is they're really good at adapting and responding to these changes to their benefit. So for example, because cancer is a disease of genes, mutations within genes that result in cancers, we need DNA repair mechanisms. These are proteins that come along, they see that there's a mutation where there shouldn't be, and they fix it, DNA repair mechanisms. So this is the mechanic in the analogy. So these DNA mechanisms need to stop, repair mechanisms need to stop working. So there needs to actually be mutations in these mechanisms to stop them. We've got something called autophagy. So this is self-eating. This is basically a recycling process in which if cells are damaged, they're broken down and recycled. Cancer cells can avoid autophagy again through mutations. Apoptosis. Apoptosis is actually a Greek word which means the leaves falling off the trees in autumn. Beautiful name, but it means programmed cell death. So once there's damage, significant damage to a cell, it can program itself to die. And what happens is mutations in cancer cells can actually avoid apoptosis, actually turns the genes off for apoptosis so they don't undergo apoptosis when they're damaged. Senescence. Senescence is a process in which cells, once they divide enough times, remember, every time a cell divides, its chromosome length gets shorter and shorter and shorter. These are called telomeres. They're the arms of our chromosomes. They get shorter every time they divide. 
Now, when they hit a particular length, cells stop dividing. That's called senescence, as though it's going to sleep. It doesn't die, it just stops dividing. Now, what cancer cells do is they can have mutations in an enzyme called telomerase, which lengthens the telomeres again. And what you find is in 90% of tumors, there's mutations in telomerase that lengthens the chromosomes. So these are all the way that cancer cells can adapt to stresses. Let's now have a look at vascularization. This is the incorporation of blood vessels around cancer cells. So remember this, that cancer cells or tumors cannot grow to greater than two to three millimeters. They can't get bigger than two to three millimeters without vascularization, okay? They also can't metastasize. That means go from one place to another place without vascularization, okay? Now, this is very important because this vascularization that occurs is stimulated by hypoxia. So, cancer cells are very hungry, very metabolically hungry, high metabolic demand. Take nutrients, take oxygen, turn it into energy so they can keep growing and dividing. Now, when they do this, they utilize all the oxygen in their area and you get this hypoxic environment. Hypoxia is the stimulation for new blood vessels to be created. And these new blood vessels that then sprout out from current blood vessels, deliver oxygen, and now allow for the tumors to grow, 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 and also allows them to bud off, jump into the bloodstream, and travel to distal places of the body for metastasis. So that moves us on now to invasion and metastasis. In order for, now normal cells in our body, they're really good at staying where they are, okay? They're very sticky, and they like to be maintained within their connective tissue boundaries. But what happens with cancer cells, they stop becoming sticky and they can move their way through connective tissue. If they do this, they can jump into the bloodstream, now there's new vascularization there, and they can move to distal or further distances within the body. There they can seed and grow more cancer cells and that's called metastasis and that's called a secondary cancer or a secondary tumor. Metabolic rewiring. Remember with the car I said that it ran out of fuel but it started to use alternate fuel sources? What we find for many cancer cells is they love using glucose and glutamine, okay? Glucose is a basic sugar, glutamine is a basic amino acid. Now glutamine can turn into heaps of different types of amino acids and can create nucleotides as well. Cancer cells get really hungry for both glucose and glutamine. Now, a lot of people have been thinking, well, that means we should just stop eating sugars. That's not necessarily the case. Some cancers have now shown to not be dependent upon glucose and glutamine, but be highly dependent upon fatty acids, lipids, and other types of amino acids. So the story is far more complex. So this is nutrient uptake. What about rewiring of pathways? Well, because we take glucose and turn it into ATP through a process called glycolysis, it spits out a whole bunch of byproducts. Cancer cells are great at utilizing those byproducts, okay, using alternate pathways. In addition to that, when we undergo glycolysis and the glucose goes into something called the Krebs cycle to make a whole bunch of ATP, it overloads the Krebs cycle because it's upregulated the use of glucose. Overloaded, overloaded, overloaded. When it does this, it spits out something called reactive oxygen species. These can be damaging, but cancer cells like low levels of reactive oxygen species because it stimulates stress responses. And this stimulation of stress responses further allow cancer cells to grow and divide. All right, let's look at number six, which is an abetting microenvironment. So basically, because cancer cells are gonna be surrounded by the connective tissue around them, they are reliant upon receiving signals from that connective tissue to continually tell it to grow and divide. Again, mutations need to occur for this constant signaling to happen. All right, number seven and the last one is immune modul modulation. So cancer cells can avoid the immune system. This is called immunoediting, okay? And there's three phases of immunoediting. Elimination, equilibration, and escape. Basically what happens is this. Cancer cells are gonna have proteins on the outside of them. They're flags, they're called antigens, and they tell our immune system, hey, I shouldn't be here. So immune system targets it for elimination. Now this is both the innate and adaptive immune systems. So this is T cells, B cells coming in to attack and kill it off. They do it because they recognize those flags. Now what that means is over time, they'll kill off cancer cells with the flags, but there may be some cancer cells remaining that have decided not to show their flags. That means what we now have in this process of equilibration is that we destroy all the cancer cells with the flags, but the cancer cells that remain are those that don't demonstrate or show their flags. So in this equilibration phase, it may last years, we've got a select population of cancer cells growing, dividing, growing, dividing, and avoiding the immune system. This is where they escape. 
the immune system. Once they go big enough and metastasize, that's where a lot of the damage can occur. So this was hopefully a quick run through of the hallmarks of cancer.